Hi, it's Paul from Staining Cake Louise and I've come down to Bobbin Head for a bit of a early spring sail. It's a Sunday about 8.30 in the morning. Not a lot of wind, but uh, it's meant to be a sunny day, which is good because it has rained a lot. Anyway, I'd like to thank all of you who sent me photos from all around the world. I've been inundated. I've got so many, in fact, I think I'm just going to put a few in each video. So if you don't see your boat this time, keep watching the videos because you might see it next time or the one after that. Time to get on the water. They've been rebuilding the seawall here and as you can see there's no bridge over to the pontoon uh, which makes launching a little bit tricky especially for me as I'm by myself. So I'm gonna put it in and then put it up here gently on the uh, kayak launching area because there's timber on the bottom there and hopefully it won't move too much because there are oyster shells around here. Well the launch was a bit hectic I'll be honest. Um, Luckily, someone offered to hold the boat while I parked the trailer. Uh, and uh, yeah, I don't think I've ever seen this many boats in, in early spring. So I think everyone realizes this is gonna be a nice day. Anyway, I'm moving along quite nicely. It's probably two or three knots down here. So I've been working on a couple of things while I haven't been sailing and one of them is my cooler box or Esky Hack. Um, a way of making a cooler box for your beer work more efficiently. Um, so we'll see if that works as it is coming into summer. Uh, and also I've made an adapted uh, tarp to use as a sunshade because my camping tarp is a bit too big really. Uh, and I just want something to keep the sun off in the middle of summer. So just over there from Apple Tree Bay Boat Ramp is the site of Woodnuts Tea Rooms and Boat Shed. Um, back in the 18, late 1800s, there was a boat shed there. And all, all around this area, they opened up for tea rooms uh, for people that used to come down from the city and the train lines at the top. So uh, you could walk down here. Anyway, I've got an interesting story about that. I'll tell you later. So that's Waratah Bay down there, which I've stayed at before, and the site of where the Windy Banks tea rooms and boat shed was also back in the 1800s. In fact, uh, they started about 30 years before Woodnuts, so they were both competing. So with Windy Banks, you can walk from there up to Barara train station, which is what their people used to do. But at Woodnuts, you could also drive down to Bobbin Head and walk along, as well as get the train down from Mount Kurungai. So uh, it was more easily accessible. And that proved very successful for the Woodnuts boat shed. Well, it's a beautiful day. And uh, there's quite a few people out of the water taking advantage of it. all about speed with some people. Put the sunglasses on so it's getting a bit bright. We're hooning along here. We've got up to 5.2 knots. Now it's about four. That's pretty good, coming up to Cottage Point. Very nice. A lot 
of empty private moorings, the yellow ones, so everyone must be out on the water. some lunch, a little bit peckish. So we put in down here, the Apple Tree Bay this morning. We come all the way up here. Past Cottage Point, up here, and now we're in Castle Bay here. So you might remember from another video, I came down in here with Dave and his cherry, and uh, we stopped off here for lunch and had a swim. We've got our own private waterfall. And then tonight I'll probably go back down here uh, and go down to Smith's Creek somewhere. I don't know what it is, but I always tend to forget something. I can't find my cutlery, which won't be an issue for my rolls for lunch, but uh, curry tonight, yeah, could be interesting. Um, the last time this happened, I was kayaking a few years ago uh, and ended up having to whittle a spoon to eat my curry. I don't think I'll be doing that tonight. So hopefully I can find it or something to eat my dinner with. So the moment of truth, I had an icebox hack, which I saw on YouTube, which basically iceboxes from uh, Eskies, as we call them in Australia, um, often don't have anything in the lid, they're just filled with air. So uh, I've drilled a few holes and filled it with builder's foam to make it, uh, give it more insulation and uh, made a makeshift latch to keep it shut. So hopefully it's kept some beers cold. Still feel cold to me. That's really cold, really good. Apparently a blanket makes all the difference. And I'm looking forward to getting my Sydney Raid stubby holder, which uh, we'll probably get on the next raid, which is up to Marl Lakes in a couple of weeks time. Speaking of which, there's about nine boats coming, so it should be good. So keep your eye out for that video. Oh, what's a stubby holder? Well, in Australia, we call these stubbies and um, it's the waterproof thermal insulating thing you put around your drink to keep it cold when you're drinking it. Stubby holder. And you can tell it's spring because you can smell it, you know, the, you can smell blossom and it's always very distinctive, the start of spring. Beautiful day and the breeze is good too, so um, we should have enough to get back to where I want to go tonight, down Smith's Creek, so it should be good. I have found a spoon. No knife or fork, but I have found a spoon. But more importantly, I forgot the curry. That's still in the fridge at home. Um, luckily, in the galley box, I do always keep a spare meal. So I've got a uh, rice risotto, mushroom rice risotto or something. So uh, I'll just have to have that. Should be okay. I've had it before. I'm pinching trying to get around this mark. <laughs> right on the edge of tacking. There's a lot of rocks here. And they're all covered in oysters. No, I think we're gonna be alright. One minute there's a bit of breeze, and the next minute there's nothing. That's why I prefer to go out of Brooklyn. It's much more open around to Lion Island. But uh, this is nearer to where I live. So 
So uh, you have to take the good with the bad, I suppose. I hope they didn't eat too much. Well, we're slowly drifting into Smith's Creek, um, the top bay. Uh, I've had to motor most of the way past Cottage Point and the wind just died completely. As you can tell now, it's probably one knot, if that. So um, this is where I was intending to stay tonight. So hopefully we'll get there relatively soon. It's about quarter past three. So my sunshade tarp didn't work, so I've had to revert to my camping tarp, which is all enclosed. So uh, in summer, it's gonna be pretty hot. That's why I was trying to figure out a way of uh, making a tarp just for a sunshade. Unfortunately, the tar other tarp I've got is my hammock tarp, and it's much too big. So uh, I'm gonna have to rethink that one. So it's hard to come in quite a bit. I thought I'd tell you about the boat sheds we passed earlier today, boat sheds and tea rooms. So the first one we passed near Apple Tree Bay was Woodnuts, which is quite an interesting name. But Woodnuts is a bit notorious because um, he had an employee who stole a boat um, and was going to sail to Samoa or Fiji. And he waited till the boss, Mr. Woodnut, uh, was away in Sydney and uh, he stole a nice cruiser boat and it broke down at Cottage Point which is only four kilometers away um, he was arrested and he spent 12 months in jail um, yeah I thought that was interesting but the name Woodnuts and Windy Banks don't you think they're interesting names um, Mr Woodnut came out from England and then went to New Zealand and then from New Zealand came to Australia um, I don't know much about Mr Windy Banks so tonight I'm going to have uh, risotto sensations, porcini mushrooms with uh, chives and black pepper. Um, and I think I'm going to mix a tin of salmon in it with it. While the risotto is cooking, let's have a look at some of the photos viewers have sent in of their boats. And if you don't see your boat in this group, don't worry, I'll put some in each video coming up because I've got so many, I can't put them all in one video. Anyway, here we go. I think it's time to add a tin of salmon. Can't hurt. Some interesting news. I've been accepted as a volunteer crew on the Dovekin. Now the Dovekin, as you may or may not know, was the first ship to discover Australia in 1606. 
It was a Dutch ship travelling from the East Indies and it was captained by Willem Jan Zoon and it arrived in Australia 164 years before Cook. There's a replica in Sydney and they have volunteers to sail the square rig ship. I'm not sure if I'll be able to film on a square rig ship while I'm crewing, but uh, it's very exciting. Mm. That is really, really good. I think I'm gonna be doing this again. Well, good morning. Looks like it's going to be another beautiful day. Clear blue skies. Uh, the wind did blow quite a bit during the night. Um, it was quite cold actually because the wind came straight through the tent from one end to the other. Um, and it's a little chilly now to be honest. But so peaceful. So peaceful here. Up at Waratah Bay, the other bay, you can actually hear the road, but from here you can't really hear it. So I'm just going to enjoy coffee, have a bit of breakfast and then uh, start my way back. One of the many people that sent him a photo from the States came from uh, Ohio. And in that state, you're not allowed to sleep overnight on your boat even if it's on a mooring, or at an anchor, or at a pontoon, or anywhere. In fact, the only place you can sleep overnight on your boat is if you're an official camping site that has moorings for people on boats. So you can't come to places like this. And it also basically kills trailer sailing and, and dinghy cruising. So if you've got a trailer sailor, you want to stay overnight, don't you? I mean, that's the whole point. And some people in England have a lot of trouble too because local councils there now are banning the parking of boat trailers overnight in car parks, which also means you can't stay overnight anywhere. What's the world coming to? I had to put my hat on because my ears were getting a bit chilly in the wind. Anyway, I'm going to have breakfast, which is going to be porridge, I think. And I've got a small container of, I think it's peaches. Well, I managed to sail off the mooring. <laughs> it's probably 10 or 15 knots coming straight down there, and uh, those moorings are quite close together, so I was a bit worried about hitting one of the houseboats, but I managed to sail around it with just the Jinnar and the Mizzen. I'm just going to potter up to the end of Smith's Creek to have a look and see what the wind's like. I've got the main ready to go up, but uh, going all right, just like this. So. Well, I went a little way down Smith's Creek and the wind's very changeable down there, going in all different directions. And I didn't want to have to spend hours tacking all the way out. So I've decided to turn around and head out to the main water where it's more open. I'm 
do a lot of tacking through these narrow parts, so you've got to keep your wits about you because there are quite a few gusts, and because uh, the wind bends around these headlands. One minute it's nothing, and the next minute you get a huge gust. So it's, uh, you've got to keep an eye out for the gusts. There are some splashes of colour as we're coming into spring. Well, it had to happen. We had a sudden gust of wind and then another one on top of that and I took some water over the side. Uh, most of it's in the bilge. Um, it does, it's not a self-draining cockpit so I'll have to uh, sponge it out in a minute. But at least we rounded up into the wind. But um, it's always a bit scary when it happens. I probably need a bit more ballast. Uh, it wouldn't happen with two people obviously. Every time I come down here, I take water over the side. It's only down here, because it's just so variable. Anyway, it's all a bit of fun. I took the opportunity to wash out the bilges, because they were full of dust and dirt. Guess what, there is good news. I found my fork. Yes, in the bilge. I don't think I'm gonna use it till I wash it again, but anyway, I don't know where the knife is. It's gotta be somewhere. I'm rewarding myself with a beer. And they're still cold. Yeah. So I think um, putting extra insulation into the lid of an esky really works. Give it a go. Thank you very much for watching Sailing Kate Louise. And thank you to all those people who have sent me pictures of their dinghies from all around the world. If you go dinghy cruising and want to share a picture with me so I can share it with everybody else, send it to sailingkatelouise at gmail.com. And as they say, I'll see you on the water somewhere next time. Actually, it'll be at Maya Lakes in a couple of weeks' time where we've got a nine-boat raid happening. So look out for that one. See you then.